Since his formative years of existence, Juan Francisco Estrada Romero has faced his unfair share of trials and tribulations. Since the beginning of his childhood, a young Estrada would find himself jumping from home to home in order for his family to help his fading mother cope with leukemia. Estrada would soon learn the pain of losing a loved one at the tender age of seven, when his mother, rest in peace, ultimately came to pass. At this point, his aunt known as Lupita would take over as a motherly figure in Estrada's life and would raise him and his siblings as her own, earning Estrada's love, affection, and admiration. Unfortunately for Estrada and his family, she too would eventually come to pass after getting ran over and succumbing to the accident. At the young age of 9, Estrada would begin to follow in his older brother's footsteps and decided to pick up a pair of boxing gloves and began learning the sweet science. Although other children would show more interest in socializing with kids their age at the gym, Estrada showed mental maturity from a young age and learned to be disciplined by mimicking the older fighters at his gym. The time came when his childhood trainer would take Estrada and his older brother to watch a professional boxing fight and that's where Juan Francisco will learn about the potential riches the sport could bring. Although not fully convinced at that point that boxing would be his career of choice, the seed had already been planted. At 15, Estrada would leave his home city of Puerto Peñasco and travel to Hermosillo to begin training under the tutelage of Alfredo Caballero. After Caballero and a few other Cuban trainers had helped convince Estrada to travel and begin training under their watchful eye and thus help a young Gallo train for the following year's national tournament since Estrada had lost in only his second fight during that current year's event. Although his dreams were to represent his country of Mexico at the world's grand stage, those dreams never came into fruition, and thus, a young Estrada and his trainer Caballero opted to make his professional debut at 18 years of age. 2011 would be a significant year for Estrada, who had amassed a respectable 18-0 record with 14 knockouts. At this point, Estrada came across a tall, lanky puncher and future world champion in Juan Carlos El Surdito Sanchez Jr., whom handed Estrada his first loss in form of a unanimous decision after having exchanged knockdowns throughout the course of fight. Soon after, Estrada would be granted an opportunity and not only potential stardom, but redemption. And this would come in form of a 16-man elimination tournament that would take place over the span of four months. Estrada would land on the finals after successfully beating three other opponents, and he would face off against his past conqueror and Juan Carlos Sanchez Jr. once more. Although Sanchez Jr.'s power showed when he managed to drop Estrada in the second round, Gallo would get back up and ultimately stop Sanchez in the 10th and final round after having rocked him, jumping on him with a barrage of punches, dropping him, and forcing the ref to wave the fight off. Estrada wouldn't only avenge his first pro loss, but he would also be granted the opportunity to face off for a world championship title. Unfortunately for Estrada, that opportunity wouldn't be for a belt at the flyweight division, the same division that the tournament had taken place in, but instead 4 pounds south at light flyweight. The fight would also come against one of the greatest Latino boxers of all time, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Come the day of the showdown, fighting in uncharted territory, Estrada would put his best effort forward and gave his all in an attempt to overcome and at the time rising force of nature in the form of the WBA light flyweight champion Roman Gonzalez. During the course of the fight, they would trade gut-wrenching power shots and would harmonize during a duet of violence over the course of 12 hard-fought rounds. Roman Gonzalez was able to retain and defend his crown via unanimous decision. However, the loss wouldn't hinder Estrada's rise to the elite level, but instead it would function as a catapult that would launch a young Juan into the stratosphere of his actual weight division for his very next fight. Having displayed his talents and abilities in a division not his own in his loss to Gonzalez, Estrada would not only garner the public's respect, but another title shot at his actual campaigning weight division when he would face off against the legendary unified WBA, WBO flyweight champion of the world, Brian the Hawaiian Punch Viloria. Viloria's brutal title reign had created an aura for himself in the eyes of many Mexican fans and labeled him as the Mexicutioner. In fact, Estrada would be called cannon fodder and a no-hoper by many of his own people as he prepared himself for the fight of his life that would be staged far from his native soil and take place in Macau, China. Although most of the public envisioned Estrada losing, Estrada would maintain his discipline and would train with a heavy heart, having just lost his Aunt Lupita a few months prior. The tragic loss would only fuel 
feel his motivation to bring the titles back to the West and present them to his beloved and now deceased second mother as a token of appreciation for the love and care she had given him and his siblings while she still roamed the earth. The day of the fight came and Estrada would start off slowly, measuring the Hawaiian punch's power and fortitude. As the rounds advanced, Estrada would become more comfortable as he gained more knowledge and would kick it into a higher gear that would last throughout the rest of the fight, ultimately grinding away at the unified executioner and earning his respect as well as a split decision that would consolidate his dreams and promises into a reality. With his impressive win, Estrada would become the unified flyweight champion of the world. For his next fight, Estrada would defend his titles against an undefeated, quick-handed, and highly technical Filipino challenger in Milan Melindo. He would also have to repack his bags and fly back east to the same stage he had previously won his belts in just three months prior. Although Melindo would display his blistering hand speed and technical prowess, he came up short round after round against a focused Mexican champion. Estrada would drop Melindo with an explosive right hand in the 11th round and ultimately arrive at a well-earned unanimous decision victory. Estrada would continue his title reign by stopping a game Filipino challenger in Richie Pronum. Soon after, he would be stepping into the ring with one of Mexico's hardest punchers in the history of the lower weight divisions, Giovanni El Guerrero Azteca Segura. Segura was coming off a hot streak in his career, but would ultimately prove too rudimentary and limited to land cleanly on Estrada and would eventually fall victim to Estrada's power in the 11th round of the fight. Estrada would follow up this win by having two relatively easy fights before coming across a former world titleist in Hernan Taisonito Marquez. He would go on to bludgeon the former WBA flyweight champion and finally get the stoppage in the 10th round of a one-sided beatdown event where Marquez had gotten dropped a total of 7 times during the course of the fight. Unfortunately for Estrada, his hands wouldn't be able to keep pace with his career and would begin falling apart to the point that he needed to undergo surgery and thus was sidelined for a little over a year in order for him to fully heal and recover. Once recovered, he would make his way back to the ring at bantamweight against a lesser opponent in order to shake the ring rust off and would ultimately vacate his flyweight championships in order for him to move up to the super flyweight division. He would have one more tune-up before finally arriving at one of his stiffest challenges to date and that would come in form of a barn burner against Carlos El Principe Cuadras. Cuadras would shock the former unified champion by imposing his hand speed and combinations throughout the early segments of the fight, challenging and overcoming Estrada's defenses on a constant basis. However, Estrada's engine would begin revving up and ultimately kick on during the second half of the fight, where his precision and combinations would begin disrupting Cuadra's fluidity and would even drop the former WBC Super Flyweight Champion in the 11th round. At the conclusion of the fight, massive confusion would occur when Michael Buffer would name an amalgamation of both fighters' name as the winner in Carlos Estrada. Seconds later, he would correct his mistake and properly announce the winner of the fight via an extremely close unanimous decision with all three scorecards reading 114 to 113 in favor of Juan Francisco El Gallo Estrada. With this win, Estrada would be granted the opportunity of stepping in the ring against a monstrous puncher in City Sacket Sorum Visay, who was coming off a brutal knockout win over the former pound for pound king in Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. In an entertaining fight where the action would swing back and forth between the orthodox challenger and the unorthodox southpaw champion, Rung Visay's abilities were encapsulated in a shell of awkwardness and burning motivation that would earn him a close split decision win, turning away the Mexican challenger whom had posed as a serious threat during the course of the fight. Estrada would bounce back in a unanimous decision over an aggressive Felipe Gallito Rocuta and overwhelm a journeyman in Victor Mendez in seven short rounds after Estrada had stepped in short notice for the bantamweight fight. On April 26th of 2019, Estrada's burning desire to avenge his third career loss 
would finally begin manifesting as he stepped back in the ring with Thailand's proud son and WBC champion Siri Sakit Sorong Fisai. This time around, Estrada would fly out of the opening rounds with a much faster pace, aware that he had to establish himself early and continue to exert his pressure throughout every round of the fight in order to muzzle an aggressive champion whom had fight ending power in both hands. To everyone's surprise, Rung Visay would aid Estrada's goal in attempting to avenge his loss by fighting in an orthodox stand for most of the fight, allowing Estrada's counterpunching abilities and lateral movements to shine and dazzle the judges, thus winning him rounds before Rung Visay reverted to his southpaw stance and began posing more of a threat to the challenger. By the time Rung Visay had realized that his southpaw stance was much more formidable against the Mexican warrior, it was far too late into the match and Estrada was sitting comfortably on the brink of successfully avenging his loss and earning himself a world title in his second weight division. The scorecards were close but nevertheless they favored the challenger and now newly crowned WBC and Ring Magazine flyweight champion of the world Juan Francisco El Gallo Estrada. Things looked to be going Estrada's way inside of the ring, and he would successfully defend his crown against an unheralded challenger in the Wayne Beeman in front of his home crowd. However, all good things must come to an end, and Estrada's hand issues would resurface and postpone a unification fight with the then, at the time, world champion in Khaled Yafai. Unfortunately for Estrada, he would miss out of an opportunity to potentially become a unified champion once more at a different weight class, and would be forced to sit on the sidelines for 14 months. Finally, after fully recovering once again, he would be making his highly anticipated return to the ring against a past foe and always entertaining Carlos El Principe Cuadras. In an all-action back and forth war, Carlos Cuadras was able to demonstrate his heart, courage and power by knocking Estrada down in the third round, forcing Estrada to get back up and find his way back into a victory. The hasty pace of the fight kept both fighters on their toes, waltzing across the ring to the rhythm of cracking leather and masterfully knitted combination strings that displayed both fighters' incredible stamina and heart. Unfortunately for Cuadras, although he displayed a gutsy performance, he would get stopped in the 11th round, after Estrada had already floored him twice and then followed up by landing a combination that would put Cuadras in danger and finishing him off with a barrage of punches that forced the referee to step in and save the Sinaloan fighter from further damage. Estrada would not only retain his WBC and bring Super Flyweight Championship belts with this win, but he would also be setting up a long-awaited rematch with the legendary Nicaraguan boxer, Roman Gonzalez, whom had also done his part and successfully defended his crown on the undercard. The story of Juan Francisco Estrada is that of a child whom endured the loss of both of his biological parents as well as the loss of an aunt whom he loved as his second mother and that would happen just months before achieving his dreams and keeping his promises and becoming a world champion to his most recent loss of his second father and his aunt Lupita's husband whom had taught Estrada from a young age about humility and discipline. Juan Francisco Estrada's losses outside of the ring have culminated into sheer motivation inside of it, writing his own history with the the pen dipped in blood, sweat and tears, Estrada rose from the ashes of obscurity and into the limelight of success and though his story isn't near completion, he has already etched his name onto the history books of one of the world's most prominent world champion producers in Mexico. After waiting patiently for nearly 9 years, biding his time, honing his skill and sharpening his abilities, Estrada is presented with a sweetened opportunity at revenge as he attempts to rectify the final bitter defeat he has yet to avenge on his record. Whatever the future brings to Sonora's finest talent, Estrada's angels could rest in heaven assured that their son has exceeded their expectations and his long sense made them proud.